Now, before this gets downvoted into oblivion, I should say that this is not replacing any sort of Third Age Reforged content, as I've said in the past. That If this wasn't coming out today, nothing would have been coming out today. So before people wound my pride too heavily, this is just an extra thing in addition to the Third Age Reforged stuff that I do, because this is, of course, Warhammer 2. More specifically, it is the Steel Faith overhaul for Warhammer 2, because this is a 1v1, and Radius is more designed to massively expand the roster as opposed to a more balanced experience, which Steel Faith does offer more of, I think. So we'll go into cinematic mode, and of course this is a 1v1 between myself and J-Monster, and I'm playing as the Lizard Man, and he is playing as the Warriors of Chaos, the oldest, the oldest, well not grudge, I suppose that's a dwarven, dwarven thing, but the oldest enemies come together to fight in this one. And of course J-Monster's Lord is a Chaos Lord mounted on a Chaos Dragon. I didn't like how the, um, well, I don't like how the, the pause menu completely mutes the music, to be honest with you, but I do want to go through the, the army compositions in a little bit of detail, because Warhammer stuff tends to happen pretty quickly, and this is a battle which takes just under 20 minutes, I believe, or just under 15 even. So this is just a little taste of battle of Steel Faith. And yes, his Chaos Lord mounted on a Chaos Dragon, because of course, dragons in Warhammer 2 are, if a faction has them, you can always expect them. And Steel Faith actually adds the ability for Chaos to bring the Chaos Dragon on its own, so that's interesting. But basically, there's no real need to pick Archaeon when you can have a Chaos Dragon mounted by a Chaos Lord. Elsewhere, I believe he has three units of these guys who are Chaos Warriors with Halberds. Good anti-large, which against the Lizard Men is always going to be good, because Lizard Men are always going to bring a lot of, well, big and heavy dinosaurs, and the Halberdiers will do a decent job of pulling them down. He's also got a couple of units of Chaos Marauders with great weapons. These guys add more armor-piercing damage. They are considerably more vulnerable, of course. Just looking at them, you can see that they barely have armor on at all. So in melee, they will fall apart pretty quickly under sustained pressure from one of the big dinosaurs. But against the Lizardmen infantry, they will add a little bit more damage, which may be necessary. He's also got three units of the fast-moving and very high damage Forsaken. They're good against lightly armored targets, but they don't tend to do too well against heavily armoured targets or large targets indeed, so I've got that going for me at least, and then there's more halberdiers over here, and in the background over here we can of course see the the glowing hell cannon, so he has decided to bring some artillery, which is not a bad idea, generally speaking the lizard men and the chaos, well the warriors of chaos, tend to be more close range powerhouses, especially the lizard men it must be said with all their high, high mass dinos, but the Hell Cannon should do pretty well if it can get a decent hit into my infantry, and I am using Reshade, by the way, so this is basically as good as Warhammer's going to look for me, because my graphics card is not quite as good as many others. Well, it's, it's a 970, but even so, this is as much as I'm going to be able to juice out of it, I think. He's also got, I think, two units of Chaos Knights with Lances. These guys in Steel Faith are considerably better, I believe. I'm not sure if they've got an anti-large bonus. Uh, but they are much better off the charge, they're more expensive and they should do a much better job than they would otherwise. Chaos Cavalry in standard Warhammer has always been a little bit lackluster and I think that's it for his army actually, all things considered. Obviously we both have armies focused a little bit more around quality and of course we both have our hills, we're both going to be charging down at one another. So to start with, I've got three units of Skink Skirmishers, actually no, that's not, what, that's not all that he had, he's got some Chaos Chariots as well. Where are his Chaos Chariots? Want to get a closer look at them before charging into the battle? Are they all... Ah, here they are. Hiding away from me. But yes, he's got two units of these Chaos Chariots over here. And these guys are obviously going to be very good at pulling through the line. A little bit of a risky pick maybe against the Greenskins. But the Greenskins? The Lizard Man. But they can pull around my lines and maybe get into my back lines, which could make them pretty dangerous. Although if they get caught on a high mass dino, then they're going to get pretty well stomped in. Because, of course, you need to keep chariots moving, as always, otherwise they're going to get roundly beaten by some of the more powerhouse-like units of the Lizard Man. As I was saying, I do have three units of Skink Skirmishers. They are cheap, and they imbue poison, and they're pretty fast. Obviously, if you put them in skirmish mode as well, they will automatically run away, which can be annoying, but for a unit like this, it actually works out pretty well. And imbuing that poison is something that I'm going to want to do. I was expecting either Kolek or the Chaos Lord on a dragon, to be honest with you, so I did want to... I did want to pull down those attacks because for my lord, I didn't do the obvious thing and bring Krokgar. Instead, I brought Lord Mazda Mundi, mounted on Zlak, his ancient Stegodon. And he does need a little bit of help against large targets, but he will absolutely paste most infantry units in melee. And of course, the advantage of him is he has a lot of spells at his disposal. I also have his bodyguards around. I've got two units of the Temple Guard, and I've got one Sora Scar Veteran on a Carnosaur. Now, this guy is... 
basically like a lightweight version of Krokgar. I wanted him to guard Mazda Mundi because Mazda Mundi's primary weakness is when he gets engaged by a big heavy monster against him with anti-large and this score Scar veteran on a Carnosaur should be able to protect him decently enough. I've also got three units of standard Saurus Warriors to just sort of pad my line a little bit. I couldn't have just Temple Guard because they're too expensive. I've got two Bastillodons with solar engines because again I was expecting either Kolak or the Chaos Lord so in conjunction with Mazda Mundi's Net of Amantok, and again, Mazda Mundi's got so many abilities, I'm not going to be able to name them all. But the Net of Amantok is one that I'm very familiar with, and hopefully I could pin down the large targets and batter them from afar with my two solar engines. And over here, I have rounding off my army a couple of units of Croxagors, because these guys are armor-piercing. They look very cool, but I do need to be careful that they don't get into the Halberdiers too heavily. Otherwise, things could go very poorly for me. So, without further ado, let's get this show on the road. And of course, with the Warriors of Chaos and the Lizard Men, with the builds that we've picked particularly, there's really no dancing around the main engagement. We will be going straight in towards one another with all of our heavy hitting units. The Forsaken will do a lot of damage, of course. Mazda Mundi will wade into the infantry and stay there for a very long time again. I think I spent around 4,000 gold on Mazda Mundi, and that's one of the thing that steel, things that Steel Faith does do quite a lot of. It will, generally speaking, the Legendary Lords are more expensive, and they are better, particularly one of the ones that got a huge buff was Grimgore, just looking at the stats. He's very powerful indeed, and you can see the Hell Cannon going after my Temple Guard. That's really the best choice for the Hell Cannon, mainly because it's not going to be very good at hitting single-target entities like the Scar Veteran, or even Mazda Mundi with how big he is. So going after the, the Temple Guardsman is definitely the way to go, because it is my most expensive infantry unit that I've picked. If we just go into cinematic mode over here, we can see the... The first engagement between the Forsaken and the Temple Guards. The Temple Guards should do very well against the Forsaken, also taking a solar engine shot there. Now, unfortunately, a bit of a mistake by me over here. I did commit my Croxagors on their own against Halberdiers and the Chaos Marauders, neither of which are going to be the best target for the Croxagors, to be honest with you. They'll do pretty well and do a lot of damage against the Halberdiers, but they'll take a lot of damage in return. And we can see that over there, my Sora Scar Veteran is going after the Knights, but more worryingly, the Chaos Dragon is coming in, and the breath attacks on the Dragons in Warhammer 2 are so brutal. So I did manage to net of Amantok him, and I will try and target him with the solar, the Bastillodons with the solar engine. You can see, unfortunately, it does miss. That's the one thing. They're kind of like Luminarchs that do less damage at range, but are capable of defending themselves in melee. And unfortunately, you can see just how much damage it did to my front line, which I believe there were Temple Guardsmen in there, which there are. You can see that over here, however, my Sora Scar Veteran is wading in against these Chaos Knights with Lances. And he's doing a decent job, but, you know, you can see that the Chaos Knights are only losing slightly. I believe they do have anti-large now, which is bad for me, and unfortunately my Skinks are also being set upon by these Chaos Knights. The Chaos Knights trying to get in. The Skink Skirmishers are going after the... Going after this Chaos Lord, trying to poison him down. I believe we did actually miss my Comet of Cassandora, which is a bit of a shame, because the Comet of Cassandora is always a, a fun a spell to behold. And this is where I don't want Mazda Mundi. I don't want him going up against the Chaos Lord on his dragon, because he will take a lot of damage. You can see that Mazda Mundi here is, is casting spells pretty much constantly, and he does have a lot of area effect attacks. You can see that the Ruination of Cities comes down, and it's just going to tear through these Chaos Marauders. The Chaos Marauders honestly weren't the best target for them, though, but they are running away now. And you can see that Mazda Mundi, he's just going to do tons of damage against the Forsaken and the Chaos Marauders, because they have no anti-large bonus, and Zlak is just... Mazda Mundi is a big ball of hit points, and unless you hit the Solar Engine, you're getting a nice hit on the Chaos Lord there, but he is going to just take damage all day long, unless you can do a lot of damage very quickly. Meanwhile, if we look over here, the Croxagors are going down, unfortunately for me. But they have done a decent amount of damage, but not as much as they did. The Comet of Cassandora was cast over here as well to try and support them, unfortunately for me, and they've also gone crazy. You can see that this is the Magic Shield that Mazda Mundi abused again. I was just using it because it is just a, a latent ability that he has, but there is really a lack of magic on the Chaos's part. Again, I'm not sure if the Chaos Dragon's Breath is the is the strongest one in the game. I think the Star Dragons might be tougher. You can see that the Solar Engine's managing to land some solid hits on this Chaos Lord now, but the Chaos Lord is still very strong. The Solar Engine's are still perfectly healthy. I managed to get a net of Amantok down on him, but unfortunately I can't really take advantage of this because one of my Solar Engine's is being set upon by these Chaos Knights with Lancers. Again, I think my Scar Veteran, if you look down here on his on his Carnosaur. My idea to have him be a sort of anti-large bodyguard to Master Mundi did kind of fall apart somewhat because, of course, he's gone crazy and he's very far away from Master Mundi. He's still going up against the Chaos Knights with Lancers and they're now winning. So I did sort of allow my army to get spread out and that's not really what you want to do with the Lizardmen in a build like this. 
these Chaos Chariots, on the other hand. They're trying to run down my Skinks. My Skinks are doing a good job of running away and poisoning, which does slow the enemy pursuers down. But the Skinks are continually getting routed by these high terror units, but I'm trying to bring them back in. At this point, Mazda Mundi is really my hope. You can see that there are also some Temple Guardsmen down here. And the Temple Guardsmen are going to do very well. The Croxagors have also come back, but they are going crazy. So I don't have control over most of my army at this point. It was only really Mazda Mundi and the Temple Guard that I had control of for great periods of the fight, because most of my other troops went nuts as soon as they went into melee with the Chaos Infantry. You can see that these, unfortunately, the Chariots causing a lot of damage in the back of my Temple Guard here, and he still has a lot of Halberdiers, a lot of Axemen available to him. And these, this... Uh, this Chaos Lord, and unfortunately my Saurus were going crazy, but they are at least bogging down this Chaos Lord, doing a decent amount of damage to him. Mazda Mundi going over here, he is now nearby his anti-large bodyguard, but the Saurus Scar Veteran has been in combat for quite a while, so he has taken a lot of damage. And these Temple Guardsmen also finishing off what's left of these Forsaken over here. And if we look at the health, Mazda Mundi is still very healthy, he's still got about three quarters of his health left, he hasn't got anywhere near... And what, what on earth was that? That was, I think, one of my magical abilities. Again, I can't really remember because Master Mundi's got so many of them. I have popped the shield, the magic shield again. I'm not sure if it protects against the Dragon's Breath. That's what I was hoping for anyway, because taking a hit from the Dragon's Breath from Master Mundi on Master Mundi would be pretty much game over. He is actually going after my Skinks with the Dragon Breath, though, and the Skinks are trying to shoot him down. They won't do a lot of damage, but they will imbue poison onto this Chaos Lord. So should he land in combat against my Sora Scar Veteran on that Carnosaur, we'll do a lot of damage. I'm trying to use the Bastillodon at close range to get these Chaos Knights off my off my other solar engine, and the Chaos Knights were real, a real thorn in my side. I underestimated them, to be honest with you. I thought my Sora Scar Veteran, with his anti-large bonus, would do a good job there, but unfortunately I was kind of mistaken. I did pop a Banishment. I also I popped about two Banishments in this, in this match, I think. This one completely missed. The other one did do a decent amount of damage against the Chaos Marauders, but again, the real problem I have is the fact that these Halberdiers are doing a decent job of pulling down my dinos, and you can see here the, the real clash of the Titans is the Carnosaur, the Ancient Stegodon, and the Chaos Dragon are all in similar place, places in the battlefield, but you can see that the Temple Guard are also in pretty good health over here, and the Temple Guard are far superior to the Halberdiers, well, the Chaos Warriors with Halberdiers. The, only, the Chosen with Halberdiers, I think it would be a different story. I think they would probably be the Temple Guards. But I'm trying to keep the Temple Guard near Mazda Mundi because he does need help against the Dragon, there's no doubt. And unfortunately, if we look over here, my solar engines are still not really free to do as they please. And if we look up here, the, the Chaos Chariots are also something that I wasn't really focusing on because I couldn't afford to. And they've been riding down my Skinks. And the Skinks with their poison are going to be very important going forward in this battle. The Hell Cannon has been sort of plugging away time after time, but neither the Hell Cannon nor the solar engines did a huge amount of damage in this battle, I don't think. If we look over here... You can see that landing in the middle of all of these Temple Guardsmen, that's going to be a bit of a bold move for the for the Chaos Lords, but the the Temple Guards, I do think they do have an anti-large bonus, but it's not huge. The Temple Guard next to the Black Guard of Nagarond and the Phoenix Guard are not quite as good against big monsters, which is a bit of a shame for Halberdier Infantry, I think. Maybe Steel Faith does, does change that around a bit. I'm a little bit unfamiliar with Steel Faith. I'm definitely not the best Warhammer player. You can see that here's the big shield. I'm trying to protect my Bastillodons. Trying to go after him. You can see that the little skinks on the side do have a little bit of a range thing, but he does actually manage to stop that solar engine shot before it manages to get in. And the Chaos Dragon is such a beast in melee. And if we look at the health he's got left, he's still got about half health. However, now the Scar Veteran does come back. He's going crazy, so I have no control over him, so I was very fortunate that he came in. And with his anti-large bonus, alongside this Bastillodon, the Chaos Lord would go down. Despite the unit winning, and now with Mazda Mundi here, the Chaos Lord is in trouble. He needs to get out of here. What's left of the Chaos Infantry is coming to his aid. And you can see just how much damage he took in quick succession there. Thanks to the anti-large bonus of the Sora Scar Veteran. It's exactly what I wanted him to do. But unfortunately now, he is getting bogged down in all of these in all of these halberdiers. And he should go down because the, the Scar Veteran has taken a considerable amount of damage over the course of the battle. Thanks to those Chaos Knights with Lances. Trying to do as much poison damage as I can, and you can see that the, the Skinks are still doing their thing. They're still getting run down by these chariots, but they're continually routing and coming back and then doing more poison damage than the Chaos Chariots. And the Chaos Chariots are slowly going down, but the Chaos Chariots have been very good at basically just keeping my ranged units busy along with the Chaos Knights. And that was really what I didn't want. And you can see the Dragon coming in, trying to kill that Sora Scar Veteran, and with the Halberdiers he should manage to do it, and he is routing. That's very unfortunate for me. And with all of these halberdiers left, this is what I really, really didn't want. Because at this point, 
Mazda Mundi's got a lot of health left. He's got more health than the Chaos Lord left, but he is considerably worse in melee against big targets than the Chaos Lord is. I'm trying to heal him with Apotheosis, which is, of course, the, the hit points, but it does actually lower the damage resistance, I think, because it is a very good heal. I'm also bringing in this Bastilladon to try and do damage to this Chaos Lord. Basically, it comes down to whoever dies first out of the Lords. Is it going to be Mazda Mundi? Or is it going to be the Chaos Dragon? Or the Chaos Lord, I should say. The Chaos Dragon is the dangerous part of this equation, though. Dragons are so powerful in Warhammer 2. They were a bit lackluster in Warhammer 1, but now those days are certainly over. And you can see that the, the Hell Cannon is out of ammunition, so it has expended all its ammo, and the, the Chaos Dwarves are coming in. But you know, they just get ploughed away by, by Mazda Mundi, and also there are a few Temple Guardsmen still alive. Unfortunately for me, though, these... These skinks have been engaged in melee by the dragon, and skink skirmishes really don't stand a chance against the chaos dragon in melee. I don't feel like I should feel the need to say that, but they they are going to get ripped asunder. I do I do do still have skinks remaining though. That does surprise me. They were actually able to win against the um, against the chaos chariots, unbelievably. All that poison did pay off in the end. Meanwhile, these chaos warriors with halberdiers coming in against these very depleted temple guardsmen which is going to be very bad for me. And you can see that this solar engine is coming down here. I am now out of ammunition in my solar engine, so I'm just basically using the Bastilladons as a big battering ram. They do have a lot of armor, so the Halberdiers are basically the ideal unit to go after them, but with the support of the Temple Guards, I will win the infantry fight. And you can see that the, the Chaos Dragon is very eager to get rid of these Skinks, and for good reason. If the Skinks are able to poison them and do a bit of range damage, Mazda Mundi should win with how low both of them are on health. If I just... Quickly, you can see that the Chaos Lord is actually considerably lower on health, but here we go, the final the final duel, as it were. Mazda Mundi against the Chaos Lord. And it is very much a class of the clash of the Titans, but in a 1v1, if both were at full health, the Chaos Lord would absolutely monster this fight, because he is considerably better in sustained melee than Mazda Mundi as a caster is. And Mazda Mundi's big advantage, the Winds of Magic, have all but dried up. I've been basically consistently casting spells throughout the entire game, mostly healing on Mazda Mundi and the Scar Veteran. But Mazda Mundi at this point, things are not going too well for him. Combat is even, very even in fact. Look at the health of these two units. But ultimately, with the health now being very similar, the Chaos Lord is looking like he's going to start pulling ahead. Unfortunately, I do think that the Skink Javelins on the front of Zlark are unfortunately out of ammunition. I cast the shield once again on myself because it just keeps keeps going. Trying to sort of buff my leadership and my magic resist. I was thinking actually that the um, the magic resist would help against the breath attacks of the castle. I wonder if those beeps are being picked up on this this replay. It's going very weird. I wonder if it's just my headphones dying. But yeah, you can see Mazda Mundi routes, and that's basically going to be it for me. Mazda Mundi was my last hope, and this Chaos Lord is going to be able to monster the rest of this fight out, it looks like. Although the balance of power is still very even, the Hell Cannon crew is coming back, the Temple Guards are wavering. I do still have this Bastilladon in pretty good health, but the Bastilladon is basically a big ball of hit points and armor, basic, just like Mazda Mundi is, but he's not quite as impressive. Unfortunately, he is luck. Trying to run away, trying to get away from this hideous looking Chaos Dragon, and things are not going well for him. And you can see that J-Monster very wisely trying to get Mazda Mundi off the field because I could feasibly still manage to get a heal off. And of course, the, the morale penalty that I would suffer from losing Mazda Mundi would basically rout my entire army. The, the leadership of all of our units at this point is not doing too great because of the because of the losses we have both taken. But there goes Mazda Mundi. He actually disappears. He doesn't leave a corpse, interestingly enough. However, he does have to land, which is... Maybe a bit of a saving grace that the dragon can't just stay up in the air. He has to go into melee against my Bastilladon. So again, it's not all over yet. The balance of power is still very even. The enemy troop count is 9. My ally troop count is 1 because the Temple Guards are actually coming back. But the Chaos Lord is the only Chaos unit left on the field. But th as soon as this Bastilladon rounds, the army losses are going to hit me. The balance of power is shifting in Chaos's favour. So this is from J-Monster's perspective. I wasn't able to save the replay myself, unfortunately. You can see the Bastilladon routes and in the background over there. The Temple Guardsmen are now routing themselves. So yeah, army losses are going to get me and the Chaos Lord was able to beast out this fight. Very unfortunate for me. Mazda Mundi did so much work, though, with 150. He managed to really tank through that infantry. The Forsaken didn't stand a chance. And the Temple Guardsmen also did very well. Ultimately... 
my mistake was micro really I misused my croxagors and my scar veteran and that really did work against me in the end the solar engines also got a few unlucky misses on that that time the chaos lord narrowly stopped that solar engine from firing if he had taken that hit the chaos lord would have died in that fight against Mazda Mundi watching this back so that was interesting to see you know, both of us, like, again, the, the Forsaken weren't really the best pick against the Lizardmen because they just got monstered by Mazda Mundi. They didn't get a lot of kills. But having said that, if they were able to get in and around the flanks, they would have ripped my Skinks apart. But in the end, that was the job of the Chaos Chariots. The Skinks didn't get a lot of kills, but they did do a lot of poison damage on the Chaos Lord. But ultimately, not enough poison damage. So again, so getting into Steel Faith, I'm not really very familiar with it, and... It's it's fun. I like this battle quite a lot, and obviously it was very close. It came down to basically the Chaos Lord managing to solo what was left of my army. Didn't have enough anti-large left. The Scar Veteran, you saw how much damage the Scar Veteran did. If he was able to stay alive and not go crazy, he would have been the thing to kill that Chaos Lord. But yes, Jay wants to beat me, and he's, he's certainly the quality to my quantity in terms of video making, so... Certainly, I'll, I'll leave a link to his channel in the description, of course, but if you're familiar with me, there's no way you're not familiar with him either so yeah you should definitely go check out what he makes because he's going to be making better warhammer content than i am uh, but yeah i hope you enjoyed this um please don't downvote it too much because it's not third age reforged i beg you and i hope you'll join me for whatever is next